I'm Chris Forsberg, former Drift Champion, and been with BC Racing for the past seven years now. I first got into drifting back in like 99 or so, and it was just seeing cars that were low, body kits, big wheels, and I liked the look of the car, and I liked the way that they were driving them. Um, you know, I had uh, aspirations to get, you know, an import car. I didn't know what I wanted to get, and so I started looking uh, online and finding these Japanese magazines and articles, and just that style is what drew me to the cars, which then drew me to drifting itself. What's my ultimate drift chassis and why? Um, I mean, I'm going with the Z. It is the car that's brought me, you know, all my success. It was my first lesson in marketing that I didn't even know that I was doing at the time. I sold my RX-7 because when I first came to California, um, I noticed that, you know, the cars were nice, they were clean. And I knew that when I wanted to commit to drifting, when I was driving back to Pennsylvania, I was like, I, I wanna do this full time, full on, like if, if you're gonna do it, do it all the way, right? And so, sold the car and I bought the Nissan 350Z. It had just come on the market that summer and it was like the new hot talk because the Z was back and, and you know, it's Nissan and I'm like, it's got a V6, it's got a good transmission and stuff. And it just, to me, made sense to have something that was different and new than everybody else. And that actually is what helped me to get a lot of my partnerships at first, uh, because it was a new vehicle that people wanted to build parts for. And so it was uh, an easy decision for me to just stick with that chassis since it helped my entire career uh, from the very beginning. Ooh, biggest influence when I first got into drifting, it's, it's hard to say any one person in particular, and I know that's a pretty cliche answer, but um, because the only real known drifters back then were the Japanese guys, and I kind of liked the most of them equally, right? But I, I kind of favored towards um, like Kumakubo, I think because uh, they build so many different cool cars and because of Ebisu in itself, right? And so I uh, love the Team Orange guys, you know, the matching cars and just them being on that track all the time was uh, one of the most popular teams, right? And so I would say that those guys just building new cars, having cool cars, um, always is what uh, kind of drew me to their style. I mean, the entry on a drift corner, it really depends on, on the corner, right? So I love doing the flick. The flick is the most fun. So if I have the option, so I guess if you look at like a grid life event, I always do the flick in, right? So. Uh, outside of competition, going with the play. Best track uh, and event that I've driven would be Road Atlanta. Um, Road Atlanta is um, the first track that I podiumed at, so it's an easy answer, but what, what drew me <laughs> to that track was, uh, I think it was 2017 Grid Life, when Grid Life used to do Road Atlanta, and we're doing full course drifting, and that was the dumbest shit I've ever done in a drift car. <laughs> Doing the, the Forza line up over the back straight, basically hitting the crest where the burnout box is for FD, sideways at a buck 50, fainting in. So there you go, <laughs> with the big flick down the hill and then through the FD chicane. So um, yeah, Road Atlanta, just the wildest times, especially with the full track at Grid Life. Uh, the biggest changes I've seen in drifting is clearly the chassis. It's just the amount of power and grip that the cars can generate now. Um, you know, people look at drift cars and go, why do they need 1,200 horsepower? And it's like, well, if you're going, you know, 80 plus miles an hour and you have that much grip dialed into the car, I mean, we can load these things up and be full pedal at Irwindale, right? And putting all that power to the ground. Um, you know, it's that amount of power to turn the tire right at that speed putting down like 140 mile an hour wheel speed i mean that's why the cars need that much horsepower right um and so it is just insane the growth of the chassis and we're still running on the same tracks right um and i don't want to sit here and say good old days right but it is a comparison um i did really enjoy and still do enjoy like the 600 horsepower range cars which is basically what we drive at the grid life events cars are real stacked up it looks real cool it's real smooth um, but yeah, just the sheer insanity of FD cars now is a wild time. The, the best advice I can give to anyone that's getting into drifting is just seat time, absolute seat time. 
do not overbuild your car. The biggest thing that people do with drifting is it's based on a project car, right? It's not based on driving. They want to have a build, right? So they're getting their chassis, you know, they might buy a roller, you know, they're doing engine swaps. They're trying to do V8 conversions and things like that. It's like, get a car and get to the track. And so that's why, you know, I recommend the Z's. Of course, it's the easy go-to 350Z. Um, but, you know, if you want to get a BMW, you know, E36, E46, those are great too. You know, just a nice uh, six cylinder engine or maybe even a V8 car, like a Corvette, like a C5, um, so that you are not overbuilding your car and you're able to drive the car with reliability. If Nissan gave me the keys to basically any platform, any chassis to build into a drift car, I mean, I'd go with the RM390. I mean, it would be a terrible drift car, but I could make it into one because it's like one of the rarest Nissan cars of all time. And it would look absolutely insane to take one of those and just, you know, whap some angle on it and, uh, you know, put a big turbo on there and make some power and, and just have that thing just whipping sideways through a corner it would be the wildest looking, you know, car. It's basically a prototype car that they only made like, you know, don't quote me on this YouTube, but yeah, it was like, a handful ever generated. My my mantra for building cars, it, it kind of goes back into the, you know, getting uh, into drifting, but you know, like I always say, keep the car on the track, don't create too much of a project, don't overbuild your car. Um, you know, the biggest thing that people do is, is they think they need the cookie cutter, uh, you know, drift kit to be able to go and drive. But, um, you know, for me, it's all about getting that seat time, and so you want to make sure like, you know, I'm not saying you have to have a stock car with diff seat and coilovers and, and you're ready for anything, um, but just keep it simple, right? You know, don't worry about doing big, crazy engine swaps. Just keep the car running, make good, reliable horsepower and, you know, get some, you know, steering angle on there after uh, you're able to clear a drift course. You know, I always tell people, if you can't clear a drift course, don't put an angle kit on your car. Don't use that as the band-aid. Uh, to learn how to drift. You want to learn with that 40 degrees of angle before you just whap that thing up to 70. And so, you know, that's that's my whole thing is, uh, you know, making sure that you have uh, a car that is, you know, within your driving capabilities. Uh, as far as like drifting goes, East Coast, hands down. Uh, I think that, you know, the best drivers have come from the East Coast. And, you know, the, the more I look at uh, as drivers, you know, obviously from the United States, not from all over the world. There are many great drivers everywhere, but uh, it appears to me that a lot of the great driving has come from the East Coast. And so, you know, I think that the Club Loose guys have done an amazing job giving, you know, just a lot of seat time. Once again, it just goes back to that word to these drivers and not just worrying about the build, which I think in the early years, that was kind of like a West Coast thing. It was like having the cool looking car, having the cool build and the East Coast guys are just thrashing, right? And just putting in the laps, putting in the miles. And uh, I think that's why um, there might've been a bigger scene on the West Coast, but I think that the better driving uh, came from the East Coast. Now it's pretty even, right? Because everyone's after it and everyone's putting down some pretty good miles. But yeah, back in the early years, yeah, East Coast is doing it right.